through the you know the vents and all that and so what happened is that there was a coolant leak in the van and the coolant was leaking out and dripping down into the you know the engine sometimes it was getting dripping down on the exhaust and uh it had a burning smell and also i just want to throw this in there because this is pretty you know you need to know this whenever it leaked down underneath you know the engine when my wife was driving because of the air that blows underneath the van that that coolant also leaked along the bottom of the van towards the back of the van sometimes along the exhaust pipe and whenever she would park it it was dripping right underneath where the exhaust pipe was so the trick behind that just want to let y'all know this because mechanics could try to say it might be a blown head gasket or something like that it was not in this case it was not the coolant leaked underneath the van and as she drove it the water you know like if this if this is the van right here and if this is where the leak was as she drove, the air pushed that fluid to the back of the van along that pipe. And once she parked it, it dripped down and it looked as if it was coming from the pipe and it was not. So anyway, the reason why I'm telling you guys all this, because it's really important just to know these things in case you got something like this. So this can be good for a Dodge Caravan or a Chrysler Town and Country. Mine is a 2013. So uh, also, um, this wasn't covered under our warranty for them to change the heater hoses. So, um, yeah. Yeah. They told me it was going to be $546 to do that. And I got this part at AutoZone. AutoZone was able to match something. I've been with AutoZone since 2000. And uh, they kind of do me really good because I've been their lifelong customer. And if I have a part that I want to get from them and I find it somewhere else cheaper, they'll match that for me. That's what they did for me. I don't know if they're going to do it for you. I'm just telling you, that's what they did for me. So, again, $546. I'm thinking like, what in the world? Even if that part cost $100, let's say originally it was $135 at AutoZone. That's with tax and everything, right? They were going to charge, let's just say at the dealership, they was going to say that part was $150. But still, an extra $400 for them to do labor on this. So stay tuned, folks. I'm going to show you if you have like a Chrysler. I don't know what the year range is, but this is something I think that is really common in the Chryslers, and I'm going to show you exactly how I fixed it. And all you really need is just a few tools and just your own hands. And hopefully this tutorial helped you guys out. Uh, again, this was a coolant leak that I said it happened like at the Y portion of the hose. Okay, the Y portion in the elbow of the hose. I'm pretty sure if you put that in, you're going to find that some of everywhere. Okay, so uh, stay tuned. I'm going to show you guys how I fixed this. This is Ty Smith, my Renaissance man. All right. Check it out. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys what I use. 10 millimeter needle nose pliers, just some wire cutters, vice grip, and I also use a screwdriver. I just wanna throw that out there. I did use a screwdriver, okay? Okay, so you're gonna see right here is what I'm talking about. Listen real quick, you can hear it dripping actually. Let's see, here we go. That is the antifreeze dripping out at that, I don't know what you call it, that elbow. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be a lot of camera. I'm trying to get my lighting here right. I'm on the only person doing this right now. Uh, let's see, let me pull it back a little bit. Yeah, this is my flashlight right here. That was given to me too. Sponsorship. Shout out to Stanley. So yeah, here I'm gonna take you guys a little further into it. See it right there? Here we go. Listen. That is where my antifreeze is dripping from. Clear as a bell, right there at that elbow, coming out at that little joint right there. Okay, let's see here. I know guys have a lot of camera, but this also was a hose that they gave me too with the kit. And it goes all the way up to the firewall. And this right here is actually a spot where a lot of times where it would drip out too. You know, if it got corroded or the plastic just broke. But yeah, so let's see. I'm just moving a few things around right here. But anyway, I'm just trying to get you guys to see where it actually is coming from again. I know my hands and everything are all in the way, and I apologize for that. I'm going to try to get a different view of this from the top. See, it's like a Y. See how it's shaped like a letter Y, and you can see where the antifreeze is dripping there from the top? Right there is cracked because that's plastic. It is plastic. And uh, let's see, what else am I doing here? Guys, forgive me. I'm trying to get some light on there. I can't tell if you guys can see that as good as I can. So that's why I got the lighting right there. So excuse me while off of this. Yep, that's the little corporate right there and here are the replacement parts as you can see why the little longer tube that i showed you guys earlier too that comes in the kit got it for about 36 dollars auto zone matched it for me because uh it was cheaper on rock auto so they matched it for me but this is where it drips it from on the other end so i'm gonna show you guys real quick here watch this uh let's see here so this right here is the piece that's actually dripping and as you see is that little part right here that make sure that it all lines up right let's see if i can get the right see how that's curving over right there that's the curve right here. Lethal and non-lethal, stop it. 
the Elvis U2. Yep, there it is. See, there it is. And it's this one right here that's going up. And I'm trying to get her to so you guys can see the firewall a little bit. But that's where it's dripping from. I said it already. That's that Y. That Y intersection, whatever you want to call it. That's what a he that's what the antifreeze is dripping from right there in that plastic because it's brittle. And over time, with the winter time and all that expanded and contracted, and anyway, here it is right here. It's that same piece, but they put rubber over with these two clamps. So let's see. Uh, right there, th th this elbow again. I'm just emphasizing that elbow is like where it's dripping from. So you see how the elbow is right there? It comes down like the letter L, backwards, uh, backwards L. Uh, that's what this part is right here. So anyway, this is the whole piece right here that's going to be getting replaced. That's where it's leaking from. Okay, let's see here. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. Yeah. So, um, see, this part right here actually is aluminum there, though. So, anyway, this part right here, a long part, it has a Y piece 2, 2, 2, shaped like letter Y. That's what this is. I'm just going to replace it, too, because it came in a kit. See how it goes up? And sometimes, a lot of times on these two, it will leak right here, this plastic part right here. It just gets brittle and all, you know, from the heat, from the antifreeze going through that, and then the wintertime. That plastic just cracked, but now you see that they have placed it with aluminum here. So that's better because aluminum can contract and it can relax. So anyway, let's see, moving on. So the first thing you do here is move this cover. Real easy, just pull up on it. Really, really super easy, folks. And see how that looks right there? These just go on to these little bitty, uh, I don't even know what you even call these thing about bobs. But anyway, it just pulls straight off of those right there. So nothing to it, nothing to it at all. Just want to show you guys so uh, anyway moving on to the next step here okay for good measure I'm just gonna move the battery so I can get a little bit more room to operate in there for those lines there so this right here is a 10 millimeter for my van in particular so yeah I'm trying to show y'all uh, can't really see it oh too glossy too shiny there we go see 10 millimeter and I'm just unplugging it and what you really want to do is unplug the negative first you always unplug the negative first negative goes off first negatives go back on last just a little thing in there so yeah we're gonna remove this negative right here okay as y'all listen to the music I don't know let's see there we go let's see uh, okay uh, yeah a little loose can't really pick it off yet so I might have to get something to pry it off a little bit but yeah because it's pretty much loose here, let me, hold, let me get a second. I think I might have a little pry bar I can kind of lift that up with. Bear with me. Here we go. Just do that. Yep, pop right up. Make sure it's out of the way because it can come back and touch and make sparkly sounds and scare the crap out of some folks. So I'm going to let it rest there for a second, but I'm going to move this out of the way, though. See how I just touched there? You don't want that sound at all. So anyway, uh, yeah, let me move this out of the way. There we go. Uh, quit trying to come back. Ah, it's still trying to move. Okay, see, anyway, I'm going to take the positive off, too. Get this on out of the way my pry bar a little bit here just to kind of help a little pop it up just like that move it out the way that negative just being hard hitting so uh let's see on this side right here there's also a 13 millimeter that needs to come out let me see if i can get you guys to see it bear with me it's a one-man show nobody was helping me my sons were at work my wife was taking them to work better yet so yeah that's a 13 millimeter right there and pretty much that's just like a little bit of a housing that holds the battery down so bear with me as I try to get it. There it is, see? Right there, 13 millimeter. But I'm gonna use actually my needle nose pliers to get it off. My wife took my truck that had all my socket wrench and my sockets in it. So yeah, I'm gonna use this needle nose right here. No big deal. Just pop it on there and twist it around just like that, folks. So uh, yeah, I'm not gonna waste y'all time on watch me untwist this, so give me a second. And now that I got it unloosened, I'm gonna just lift the battery on out of the way. Just like that, move it, bling, just like that, folks, nothing to it. Okay, let's see here. I'm putting this on the table right now, so that's why y'all kind of got a little bit of a pause right there. So I'm trying to get my camera so you guys can get a better view of the hoses that we were talking about earlier. So bear with me as I move my camera around. What y'all doing? Y'all cool? Y'all paying attention? You probably don't even have a crash. This also works for a uh, Dodge, too. So anyway, this clamp right here, I'm going to take off. I like to use vice grips and I'll show you why. I love to use vice grips on these right here. They help a great deal. So, yeah, I'm going to have to find some way to get in there. I'll get out the way. Positive cable. 
uh yeah so anyway let me see here i'm mean, anyway i'm gonna take this off right here folks i don't know if my hands are in the way to where y'all can see it let me see so i'm gonna clamp down on it anyway it's easier to move it this way so let me take a break and show y'all exactly what i'm talking about right here okay give me a sec all right so right here is these clips right here that's on the hose that i was telling you guys about so the reason why I like to use the vice grip is because right here I can just clamp down on it and look at that. It locks it right there in place. The vice grips holds onto it. I can move that clip up and down the hose freely as I know to, take it off, put it back on just like that. See that? It easily slides away. That's why I like using the vice grip because it holds onto it and I can either pull on the hose and uh, see this little clip? I can unclip it just like that when I clamp it back on there. So I love using the vice grips to do this. Either needle nose or this one right here. So yeah, I like this. See, here we go again. Squeeze it, pop, and see it keeps it locked in place just like that. Just a little tip to show you guys nothing to it but to do it all right all right so check this out here's that longer hose right here and see how it goes that right here and it goes down and curve over to the left on the bottom right i just want to show this that is right there on the bottom there's a clip right there and i'm getting up with the needle nose pliers okay that's the bottom but then that same exact one when you follow it it goes up to the top part up here they got clips on the side and that's why it's good to have these needle nose pliers right here because it's going to help you get those clips right there really really good those clippity clips right here yep needle nose pliers on there press them down squeeze them it locks and once the uh vice grip needle nose locks then uh, you can just pull those backwards easy so just want to throw that in there it didn't cost you nothing all right so uh yeah so see i moved that clip back by using that vice grip and now it just makes it easier for me to slide this hose off and if the hose don't move all you gotta do is get like that same vice grip or something like that just to uh right here see i have it have, have a push back it's hard to move back like that see can't really pull just put the vice grip on it don't tighten it super hard just get enough to get a grip on it to move that uh hose around just to kind of loosen it a little bit just like that there sorry about my elbow being away I just use that to loosen it right there and there is going to be some fluid that's going to come out when you pull this off so i got a pan underneath there if not you just uh you know spray your floor off and you know i just pretty much uh have a pan down there that's catching a lot of this but stuff did splash on the floor so i just spray it with my power sprayer and squeegee it on out of the garage whatever and all that good stuff so yeah just want to show you all that part right there as that hose clamp right there came off okay let me zoom back a little bit so you guys can see that view of that first little hose that I was showing you guys right there. So uh, let's move on to the next step. All right, folks. So you can see a better view of this now. Uh, that's right there, kind of going right there. You see that? I'm pretty much trying to focus on that clip right there, as you guys can see. Hopefully, y'all can see it well. Oh, boy, jumble, jumble. So anyway, I'm going to try to get in here with my needle nose pliers to take those clips off. The same little example I showed you guys earlier, the same one I'm going to use here. So, uh, yeah, you see, let's see. Uh, oh, God. Okay. Oh camera trying to focus in one man show here folks i apologize so i'm trying to get that clip off let's see right there i'm going to put the needle nose pliers on there and clamp it down like i showed you guys with the vice grips to clamp it down so uh let's see uh this is going to take some you know a little bit of uh finessing to get in there but i don't want to bore y'all with this part right there i'm just going to show you that i squeeze that on the clip and move it backwards like i showed y'all in the example earlier so here okay so this is me showing you guys my gloves rip right there hands too big for the it's supposed to be xl so see how it's gripping down on that and i can just freely move it up just like that i'm trying to get y'all a good view i'm sorry i apologize yeah but i'm moving it up just like that see that and i can just unclamp it like that probably need to do the same thing i showed you guys earlier where i put this around that hose and i wiggle it a little bit and pull it off but let's see here probably need to move a little further let's see well, no i'm just putting it on the hose right there so don't mind my red arm and my forearms flexing my forearm muscle look at my muscles i do it yeah okay so let's see uh what am i doing here um bear with me folks i'm sorry moving this on out the way that's a negative cable right there Let's see, getting some hoses out the way. Let's see here. Like, here we go. Uh, my arm is in the way, so excuse that, folks. But anyway, uh, let me move on to the next step so this won't be in the way because you guys don't have no idea what I'm doing. So hold on. Okay, so these are the hoses that's actually against that firewall right there. And see the little clips up there? You probably can. It's up uh, at the top. Let's see, right there. See right there? those clips up there i just use the vice grip to do the same thing too and i'm just pulling it out of the firewall you don't have to worry about no fluid coming out of that 
Okay, just pull this on out of the way, just like that. And let's see here, move this on out of the way and... Hmm. Trying to focus on something here. Sorry about the little pause here, guys, but uh, I'm kind of moving some things. Like I said, this is a one-man show, so I don't have the luxury of trying to get you the best shots that I can possibly get while I'm over here grabbing various tools. What y'all doing? Y'all having fun? Y'all like? Right? Y'all good? I know, I'm just kind of filling in for this uh, camera. What do y'all think about that yellow top right there? Okay, so yeah, I don't think I'm going to bore y'all with showing my arm. I'm just going to take off this other clip right here, so bear with me. you got to be right back. Okay, so I'm just trying to get some better lighting here so I can show you guys me pulling that hose off the lower part right there. Trying to focus in, so bear with me. So here he is, right at the curve. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I'm going to try to get this one on the bottom. They got the clip sticking out right there. So got my vice grips on it. See that? Unpopped it. The clip moved back. So I'm gonna just get in here, kind of probably try to wiggle a little bit to try to pry it off. Boom, there we go. See? Just like that. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to, like I said, one man show here, guys. I'm trying to show y'all the hose, so bear with me. Bye bye. Okay, let me, yeah, let me go. Let me zoom out a little bit. There it is. That's the longer one, okay? This one had no problem, but it also can have problems if you got a van like this. Now, let me show you the new one that's going to be coming along with it because you're going to see the difference between it having that aluminum piece right there. So, there it is. See that? Let me flip it around. There we go. See how it has that uh, aluminum right there in the middle instead of that plastic? Because that plastic is what can crack. But this is not the, this didn't actually crack. But the one, the other one did. But this actually is one of the issues that does happen. That's why they give it to you in a kit with two pieces on there because this can crack that plastic from contracting and expanding plastic will crack and just deteriorate so yep just showing that they match up that's what i wanted to show you guys so that's that see if we work on getting this other one out of here okay bear with me hopefully i'm not in the way too much but if i am we'll see uh now let's go for that one okay let's see here okay yep it's up against the firewall I need to show my face a little bit because some folks don't believe that I'm doing this on my own. A lot of times they think I got somebody that's working on it since they showing the hands and the arms. I'm like that could have been anybody doing that. That doesn't mean that that's necessarily you doing it. So as you can see, it's a one man show again. Sorry about the camera and all that crazy shaking and bouncing, but I am glad that you guys are still here and watching them, watching them, watching. Let me zoom in. There's the piece right there. That's the culprit right there that was dripping that I showed you earlier. Okay, Ty, get it together. Okay, here we go. Let's see right there dripping from that spot and i'm sorry i'm in the way i could have showed y'all so much more oh my gosh y'all forgive me for this forgive me that's the culprit right there that plastic okay let's see if i can get you guys a better view what y'all doing y'all doing all right y'all going to excuse me Okay, so this right here, I'm going to take my screwdriver and try to press that in. See, it's the same little clip right here. Yeah, right there. See that? If you press these in right here, in theory, it should come out just like that. In theory. In theory. And then pop back in. So I'm trying to press those clips in to get that plastic piece right there out. But it doesn't always go that way, which I'm pretty sure is not going to go this way on this one. So right there is the new one. See what I'm saying? And look in, that clip comes out and goes back in. That's how it should happen to get that one off. Sorry about my torn gloves. These mechanical rubber gloves. Yeah. Exhale my butt. Okay, let's see. Bear with me as I switch up. I think I'm going to try to grab a screwdriver or something here. Like get a vice grip to kind of press on those clips there. <laughs> oh my God. Focusing all on my face. You can skip through this if y'all want to. So, yeah, I'm just going to pivot over this a little bit. Anyway, give me a second here. Okay, and I got it off, and I'm gonna show you guys how I did it. See some coolant leaked out right there too. Still got my vice grip clipped on that outer part of that ring there. Oh boy, what did I just do here? Okay, oh, get your hands out the way, Todd. Get them out the way. Zoom back. There you go. Okay, so there it is, and you can see how I got it off. And I'm gonna show you guys. I used like some wire cutters 
to cut that plastic piece right there but I'll explain that to you more what I'm talking about let's see let me get this stuff together so I can show you what I did I don't know if you guys can even see that come on oh my god I'm terrible guys I told you this is hard when you got one camera I'm trying to manage the camera those uh the new part and my little satellite light right there so here it is right here okay 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 calm down Tyler. okay get it together bro all right there we go see same exact thing this is aluminum see and that's plastic and that's where it cracked at and all the aluminum that was leaking out the coolant was leaking out all from right there so this thing cracks easy because it's plastic so okay yeah plastic i'll say let's see i'm gonna show y'all where i cut it at with my wire cutters so let's see this right here actually is clamped on with a hose now rubber hose there instead of it being plastic which i think is going to last longer right there possibility it may leak out there later later in the future way down the road. i don't know yet though but i'm just kind of throwing that out there won't cost you nothing to add that extra info so this clip right here see that black part right there i cut that with some wire cutters right there and you can see it's missing from right there the gap is i cut that and that freed it because it was ridiculous trying to get in there i got huge hands it was ridiculous trying to get in there and um excuse me with the camera <laughs> It was ridiculous trying to get in there and squeeze and pull off of my hand. So I got long arms and big hands and I couldn't get in. As you can see, the vice grip is still squeezed on that clip there. Okay. See that? So I'm going to do the same thing there to get this clip off right there. I'm pretty much going to just cut it off. You don't need it because they give you a new one to go with it. So no biggie there. Okay. So just bear with me. Okay. What are you doing, Ty? What are you doing? Okay hold on for a second okay so let me zoom out a little bit got that off let me show you guys something unique here see these they come pre-clipped like this this little thing over it so all you got to do is right here and see that hose you put it right over the pipe like you know oh my god put it right over just like that lethal non-lethal stop elvis you too and just pull this off and it'll clamp right onto it okay they made it like that so it's pretty cool it's kind of glued onto it just wanted to show you guys that real quick so be right back all right, so you see these right here there against the firewall, and I told you about those clips right there earlier. So all you gotta do is put it right over that, just like this. Push it in there. Let's see. It don't take much, just kind of twist it a little bit. I know my gloves are tearing again. I told you, that's like the fifth one I put on. And I just took my pliers and tightened them down pretty good. to pretty much where they closed. And I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with this clip here. If the video hurry up. Go right in here on top of that clip that kept that clip open and pull it off just like that see just like that and it's locked on Pretty okay cool, so huh? it has that same little clip right there right so i'm gonna just grab a screwdriver you can see that see that little open little area down there that clip is holding that clamp on the clamp is currently open so that clip right there I'm just use my screwdriver to pop it on off and you hit the floor so don't worry popped off and is locked onto that pipe right there just like that pretty little clever idea they did for you you don't have to do no work in front of you know get it maneuvered in there holding your vice grips oh wow what did i just do okay what is going on here <laughs> what in the world are you doing ty let me see zooming out oh boy oh boy what am i doing trying to get my light in place Okay, see this hose right here, the one I showed you earlier? Let's follow it. I'm going to show you guys where it goes to because some people might get confused and put it on the bottom when it goes up. Right here, see that? That Y intersection part of this hose here. Okay, come on camera. Uh, there we go. It goes to the top part of the firewall. And the one that was leaking goes right there. Just making sure in case somebody put it on the wrong one. Don't want to do that. See that? Remember the curve? Anyway, that clip right there, those had those little links on it that I just took off. And again, let's see here. Move this other way. That's the one that was leaking, the old one, at that Y intersection, whatever you want to call it. It's a Y. Y. So zoom out, and I think we're good to go. So uh, let's see here. What am I going to do now? What am I going to Okay, yeah, I'm going to just put this cover on. Okay, on now so let's see. Now okay, there is something I want to point out here, guys. See this right here? This right here can mess up your massive airflow sensory, okay? So make sure that that is on because you see when I was pressing on that to get into those areas, this right here came loose. 
so it's nothing to it just to kind of kind of back up and check yourself so just put it back on there just like that push it on all the way boop, boop, just like that okay see make sure that that one didn't come out down there either which is all good and now we can put this thing on there that's actually unnecessary really my wife just like it because it's pretty much cosmetic i'll show you what i'm getting inside of the battery area let's put the battery back in there and let's see there's the old one right there that's where it was leaking from sucker 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 that's where it was leaking from okay so let's see So yeah, I'm gonna put this back on. Like I said, this is just cosmetic. Just makes it look good and it just goes on, it lines up and all you gotta do is push it back on. Just like that. That's it. And now I'm gonna top off the cooling fluid, go from there, but uh, should I do this? Should I tell you about this part or not? I'm not sure. Maybe I should just save a good match. Anyway, this is right here, just 100% antifreeze. This is not 50-50. It's better to do it this way to me because you can just get some distilled water and uh, mix it yourself. So I'm gonna show y'all what I did and how I do it, okay? Give me a second. Okay, so right here, this is like a 64 ounce bottle right here. So I just put, you know, 32 ounces of water in there and I put 32 ounces of the antifreeze in there. It's cheaper to do it that way. Make sure the water like this is distilled water. No minerals or anything in there because they can become like build up and stuff if you put it in your system like that. So I don't ever buy 50-50. I buy actually 100% antifreeze and I mix it myself so I can, so because it lasts longer that way instead of using the whole bottle. See? All concentrate antifreeze. 32 ounces of water in there, then 32 ounces of the antifreeze. You may not use it all, but still, I, it's like half this bottle is left. Just thought I threw that out there. Some people don't do it, but I do it all the time. So 64 ounces, 64 ounces of water. I'm sorry, 32 ounces of water, 32 ounces of antifreeze. And you remember I took the battery off? See this right here? That's what's holding the battery in. Now, it's a little interesting little thing right here I want to show y'all. See how this does right here? It pulls back, clips back. So you can get the battery in there and push it back forward. I know it may seem crazy, but I'm just telling you, this is something that you may not think that may be a big idea, but it definitely is a big deal. So yeah, see how that pulled back? Just like that. And again, that's a 13 millimeter. So let's see, and put the battery back in there with all that asbestos wrapped in it. <laughs> I mean, wrapped around the battery. I'm just joking, it's not asbestos. It's some type of covering. It really is unnecessary, but like I said, my wife's like, it's supposed to be on there. Maybe it keeps the battery warm. I'm like, oh my God. So just for her happiness, I'm just leaving it on there. She don't care about me breathing and all this asbestos. Anyway, give me a sec. So the same way I took it off, the same way I put it back on. Took my new nose pliers over that 13 millimeter boat and just tighten it up there and uh, Nothing was really to it. Like I said, my wife had my socket wrench and it was inside of my truck in my toolbox on the back. So I just used this needle nose and just twisted it on there. See, nothing to it. Ain't gotta be real fancy. So make sure it's locked in and all that good stuff. And don't put this nice little asbestos wrapping around the battery. It's not asbestos, folks. I'm just joking. I just teased my wife over that. And uh, let's see, we just gotta put the battery cables back on there. And remember, negative comes off first, negative goes on last. So positive goes on, and I use a 10 millimeter to tighten it up. Okay, 10 millimeter, just like this. Okay. I know. I don't know, for some reason that felt warm. I don't know, maybe it's just that one hand. I tapped it with a different hand. So anyway, I'm going to put the negative cable back on there, just like that. Tighten this in a little bit more. Don't tighten it too crazy though. You just want to get it to where it won't pop off. So anyway, we're tightening this back on there. And uh, that's, I think, uh, wait a minute. Is there more of this video or that's going to be all she wrote? I'm just tightening it up. What y'all doing? Y'all good? And put this asbestos wrap back underneath that part right there. All right, so as y'all can see, it wasn't nothing really too hard for that. It definitely, in my opinion, was not worth no $546. I mean, no. So if you have a 2013, like I said, you can actually check the years that this actual particular part is like that on those vans or a Dodge Caravan, then I'm pretty sure you can do it yourself. Uh, one of the things I would advise you to do is if there is any freeze on the floor or the ground in your garage, be sure to spray some sort of solution or even just spray it off so no dogs or animals will lick it and die and you be the reason why they got poisoned with lethal injection but um yeah it was it was, it was this is pretty simple so if i say on a scale of one to ten how what the difficulty was i would probably give it like a five is what i would give it 
because you are literally just clamping things and unclamping things, pulling hoses and putting hoses back on. So, um, um, again, make sure that when you get done doing this, that you top off your antifreeze fluid. Make sure that it is the right fluid that matches the manufacturer's suggestion, although they got universal ones. And um, hopefully this helps somebody, you know. Uh, I don't know. I'm just one of those people that that's why the therapist gave me the name Modern Renaissance Man, because if I can learn it and do it, then it's a good chance I'm going to do it. Some things that may be a little too major for me, I won't play around with, but something like this, I'm like, surely I can do this. So um, anyway, uh, again, I know I'm probably repeating myself. I hope this helps somebody. And just like I end all my videos, I hope and pray that every last one of you guys have food, shelter, and clothing. And most of all, I hope and pray every last one of you guys are in great health. God bless you all through Jesus. What is going on, folks? Appreciate you guys watching. Do me a favor. If you're trying to get to the next reaction video that I did after this video, it's right here. But if you're trying to get to my own personal stuff where I do a lot of comedy things that make you laugh, can help brighten your day, then you click right here, all right? And if you want to subscribe to this channel, you forgot to get to know who I am first, all right? Then you're going to click right here to lead you into this description. Make sure you hit the bell notifications to get notified anytime I post a video, all right? Let people.